The Mojave Desert. Located about 100 miles northeast of Los Angeles, it's the smallest of America's four deserts. It's also the hottest and home to Mojave Solar, one of the largest solar power plants in the world. Here, rows and rows of mirrors, 630,000 mirrors to be exact, stare upward reflecting the hot sun day in and day out. It's the start of a process that produces renewable energy that powers thousands of homes. This is a solar thermal electric power plant. It's also called Concentrated Solar Power, or CSP for short. General Manager Fred Riddell oversees plant operations. It produces electricity by collecting the sun's light, focusing it on a receiver, heating that fluid, running it uh, to a steam turbine, and running a steam turbine generator. That produces the electricity that gets to the grid that it ultimately gets to homes. The project, owned by a company called Abengoa, took two and a half years to build. The sun collectors in this system are parabolic troughs, large mirrors shaped like a giant U. The parabola is used to focus light that comes in from the sun on a heat collection element that's running at that focal point. That focal point is a tube filled with fluid, in this case it's a heavy synthetic oil, that can withstand the amount of heat produced. We're talking 750 degrees Fahrenheit, now that's hot. Then the heat goes to produce the electricity, which is different from photovoltaics, which uh, produce electricity directly from light interaction with the panel. The curved mirrors are connected together in long lines, and there are a lot of them. The total amount of collectors in length is about 175 miles in total. That goes from here to Las Vegas. Computers control the mirrors so they track the sun from morning to night to collect heat and make the most out of every daylight hour. Well, we're standing out in front of a collector. Uh, the collector here is comprised of a structure that holds the mirrors. Above that are the mirrors that are in a parabolic shape. And then above that, you can see a black pipe with a glass envelope around it, an insulator. That's what actually receives the sunlight or the energy that heats the heat transfer fluid that's flowing through the entire plant. The heated fluid ends up in a heat exchanger where it heats up water. That water turns into steam, which is sent to a turbine, which turns a generator. That's what produces the electricity. This plant produces 250 megawatts, which is enough to power about 90,000 homes every year. We deliver into the California grid, and what that means is where the power is actually needed is where it'll be delivered. This electron that might leave here might uh, arrive in Los Angeles or wherever the actual need is. 250,000 kilowatts is a start, but consider this. In 2014, Americans used more than 1 billion kilowatts to power everything in their homes and workplaces. Most of that electricity still comes from fossil fuels like coal, which emits harmful gases. In 2014 alone, electric power production sent more than 2,000 million metric tons of CO2 into the air. Renewable energy, like CSP, doesn't emit a thing. We actually have no uh, fossil fuels used on the site. We have um, what is essentially a 100% renewable energy project. Even the fluid used to transfer the heat is recycled and the steam is condensed and recycled again as well. This 1,765-acre facility sits upon what's called previously disturbed land once used for farming. Environmental Compliance Manager Kathleen Sullivan says there was very little wildlife here. It didn't have a lot of vegetation, it didn't have a lot of um, native species living here and uh, didn't provide a lot of habitat for anything, so it was, it was prime for development. Even so, they were diligent in covering every possible environmental issue before building. We had to study every aspect. We had to study uh, the cultural resources. We had to study biology. We had to study paleontological resources, uh, air uh, resources, visual impact, you name it, geological, uh, hydro or, or water resources we had to study. They considered the area's entire ecosystem when developing the project. There's areas of critical environmental concern surrounding our project that are habitat for a lot of desert tortoises, for burrowing out from a hobby ground squirrel, for kit fox, for tarantulas, for scorpions, for all kinds of, of animals. And uh, there's a lot of birds that migrate through here as well. So you'd be surprised at how
how much lives out here. And speaking of birds, Sullivan says the mirrors don't pose a threat to those that happen to fly by. With the parabolic troughs, it focuses the light onto that receiver tube. So most birds won't get that close to the collector anyway, and they would have to practically be on the tube to get any sort of high rate of solar radiation. Today, the area is a glimmering oasis of reflected sunlight that's on the forefront of renewable energy. It's also just the beginning and a great field for aspiring engineers. I would say definitely get into technology and get into renewable energy. Energy will be needed for as long as we're here. It'll need to be stored, it'll need to be uh, transmitted, it'll need to be generated. All of that is something that an engineer can do and participate in making a better world. A world where one day, the sky or even the sun won't be the limit.